Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you knew, my name is Bobby. Guys, there is this uh, video called Why I'm No Longer Vegan Insanity by Dr. Garth Davis and published by the plant-based news network. So in today's video, we're going to do a response. Okay, I've written about this before and I'm going to make this video and then I'm not going to touch this up subject again it's just it, it's really it's completely inane you're not going to see my other physician and scientist acquaintance and colleagues even mentioning this but i am getting tons and tons of messages from people absolutely petrified because there's all these young millennials on youtube who were vegan and are no longer vegan and they're posting these videos why i'm no longer vegan and are they right and should i not be vegan and is it ruining my body and all that kind of stuff and i don't know it, it's crazy to me i mean it's absolutely crazy because these are kids posting this stuff i mean these are like young kids a lot of them with eating disorders who are posting videos about why they are no longer vegan all right so straight off the bat he starts the video by claiming that everybody that is an ex-vegan is by default a 20 year old millennial girl with an eating disorder don't you think that this is very pretentious don't you think that this is obnoxious to say the very least you truly believe that every ex-vegan out there is a young girl with an eating disorder the last time i checked I wasn't a young girl with an eating disorder. I did not become vegan because I saw a YouTube video that told me to become vegan or a, I wasn't, I didn't see some guy and think, oh, that guy's vegan, therefore I should be vegan. I did it because of science. Um, I did it because of research that I did. I did it because of how I saw a whole food plant-based diet work to people. I did it because of the environment and finding out what animal products and animal agriculture does to our environment. I did it because of the absolute torture that happens to animals. So he goes on and says he did it because of science. He did it because of the environment. But in the end, he admits that he did it because of the torture of the animals. So all of those facts are being thrown around lately. Do it for the environment, even though we know for a fact that the only way to save our environment is by repopulating the grasslands with cattle. There is only one option. I repeat to you, only one option left to climatologists and scientists, and that is to do the unthinkable and to use livestock bunched and moving as a proxy for former herds and predators and mimic nature. There is no other alternative left to mankind. You are destroying your health with meat, even though all of those plant-based studies included certain amounts of animal products, even though we know for a fact that only processed meats are classified as carcinogens. The plant-based studies clearly convinced Dr. Garth Davis. Which studies are those? You can clearly see that those studies, quote-unquote, are clearly flawed. We're talking about population studies here. We're talking about the Okinawans. We're talking about the blue zones in general. All of those populations have been consuming animal products and not little of it. Just because they've been eating sweet potatoes and certain other plant foods doesn't mean that that was the reason for their longevity. All of those civilizations are still eating pork and fish and whatnot. But the reason that I'm mentioning that he said in the end and the animal suffering is that I can clearly see a man that is highly invested in the ethical treatment of animals. That is not a bad thing, but that doesn't mean that the science is accurate. You can see somebody that is emotionally invested in the cause. This is why Dr. Garth Davis gave Fully Raw Christina a B12 shot just before taking her blood. And the next day he claimed perfect b12 levels very disingenuous which brings up a point veganism is an ethic so i don't know these people that say i'm leaving veganism are basically saying i'm changing my ethics i guess um i know true vegans true vegans are vegan for the animals i mean they don't have a drop of leather they don't even wear wool uh, and they are completely dedicated to helping protect animals 
and they are they would never leave veganism because they got a zit or they got gas that just that wouldn't even come up in their mind because they're so strongly for the animals this actually in some ways hurts the the vegan movement in, in, in this one manner a lot of the studies done on vegans use ethical vegans in there so for instance the epic study that was done in Oxford, there were a lot of ethical vegans in that group. And when you looked at their diet, it was very low in fiber and some of them didn't even get 500 milligrams of calcium. So they had extremely low calcium levels. And so the, you would then make these generalized statements about vegans and their health. See the plot twist there. <laughs> that is amazing. Because first, obviously, he continues with his ethical speech. And he says that no real vegan would ever ditch their ethics. But then he proceeds and tells you that those studies that been directly done on vegans, not the population studies on the plant-based civilizations, but those studies that have been done on actual vegans are flawed as well. Because those people have been ethical vegans. And those ethical vegans, of course, they did it for the animals and not for their health. And this is why their health suffered. Can you see a pattern here? It's really disingenuous. So if you check the population studies of people that have been eating plant-based, those people are healthy. But now you see when people exclude all the animal products, true vegans, the health diminishes those studies are not that great. They don't paint a beautiful picture for veganism. Quite the opposite. But Garth Davis has a reason for that as well. Because those people are the ethical vegans. They do it just for the animals. Um, and by the way, they were still extremely healthy. But they would have been even healthier had they followed uh, a more balanced diet. But they're not in it for health. Uh, they're in it for the animals. And so these YouTubers that are leaving veganism, they're not vegan. They're leaving their previous diet. So now he's pushing the same narrative as freely. It doesn't matter that you've been vegan for years and years on end, that you were so invested in the ethical movement. I know guys and girls that have been in the animal liberation front and they're not vegan anymore. But according to Dr. Garth Davis, according to freely and all of those other vegans, you have never been vegan. <laughs> and let me tell you, the diet that these people are doing are not the diets that Dean Ornish or Esselstyn or especially Furman or myself tell patients to eat. All right, so he continues to essentially debunk himself. Ornish, Furman, Esselstyn and himself. What those doctors recommend. Listen to the doctors. Okay, let's listen to the doctors. What does the Ornish diet recommend? Eat all the beans, legumes, fruits, grains and vegetables you need to feel full. Eat dairy, low or non-fat dairy products such as milk, cheese and yogurt in moderation. Only 10% of your calories should come from fat. Okay, so it is a low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet. And yes, Again, I do agree, the population studies have been done on people that have been eating animal products. Don't you understand this? Even Furman recommends animal products. This is not a vegan diet. The whole food plant-based movement started in the 80s and the 90s. That had nothing to do with veganism. That meant a diet high in plant foods, a plant-based diet. But vegans took that term and mixed it in with their ethical movement. They obstructed the original movement. And now they are telling you, eat a plant-based diet because we have so much plant-based science. All of that plant-based science has been conducted on plant-based eating, not on vegan eating. All of those studies included animal products and so did the Ornish diet. It's not even in the same realm of what we tell patients to eat. I mean, these people, look, they're millennials. I, I was the same when I was 20. I went from one thing to another, one interest to another. Again, just disqualifying those people that truly suffered on their diets. They're just in their 20s. They just failed on their diets because, hey, they jump from one thing to the other. I did that too. Now I'm this reasonable doctor. I have all the scientific credibility. Obviously, those people did it wrong. 
<laughs> and they were they go to these unbelievable extremes they're doing nothing but juices this is amazing you know when vegans list all of those fallacies where do you get your protein appeal to authority this is exactly what this guy is doing at hominem attacks you did it wrong you're no longer vegan they all keep repeating the same narrative in this cult like what's amazing to me is they'll go on like these juice diets where they're basically just it's they're just taking in sugar that's all they're taking they're, they're hardly getting any fiber they avoid some of the key nutrients so they a lot of them like for some reason it's like just they can't even believe that you would ever cook food which is look it's crazy to me okay rational dr garth davis just discovered that everybody that fails on the vegan diet actually has been on the raw vegan diet all of those 20 year old girls actually have been juice fasting they haven't even been vegan they ate a raw vegan diet that was the issue <laughs> But so they therefore will avoid all kinds of food groups. They won't eat soy because they somehow believe soy is bad for you. Whereas the science does not show that at all. It shows that soy is very good for you, but soy is a great source of amino acids and protein. Now we believe that soy is bad for us. Silly me. How can I make the assumption that soy is bad for us? That is ludicrous. All the science shows that soy is so good for us. It's not allergenic at all, right? It doesn't mimic estrogen at all it's super healthy for you all the asians they're eating soy products i live in asia i live in thailand do you know how little soy people consume it is highly allergenic people use it as a condiment nobody eats tofu like the westernized vegans nobody would ever make a tofu steak nobody eats more than 20 grams of tofu at best and that once per week great so a lot the soy milks now are just loaded with calcium uh tofu is loaded with calcium so they don't get enough calcium the soy milks are loaded with calcium yeah of course they are because they're fortified it is like taking a supplement that is a supplement beverage this is why they're loaded with calcium but i'm sure you know that they will avoid grains and legumes because you've got to cook them. Or if they get legumes, it's very little. They avoid most grains altogether. They're not eating grains and beans. Crazy people. No grains, no beans. Doesn't matter if you have a gluten intolerance. Eat those grains. They're healthy for you. Beans, doesn't matter if they make you fart. Doesn't matter if they have anti-nutrients. Those lectins, who cares? Eat beans every day. This is something that you always see in those plant-based movements. The blue zones have been eating beans. Therefore, it must be healthy for you. Guys, those blue zones, yes, they've been eating beans. But again, just like the tofu, in little amounts, in very, very small amounts as a condiment. If you see their bean soups, those soups are meat-based and you have some beans floating around. Nobody would ever base their diets on beans, on grains. If you do that, digestive issues are the next logical step. And this is why people fail on veganism. It is not because they didn't eat those foods. It is because they overate those foods. Because they had to eat those foods in order to get their calories, their proteins, their minerals and whatnot. And because of overconsumption, those people flooded their guts with anti-nutrients. I really cannot understand how a medical professional can recommend those things. So, um, so eating vegetables, um, you're saying you can eat all you want, but isn't there, um, when it comes to fruit, because of the, even though it's natural sugar, there's probably should be a limit on how much? Absolutely, categorically not. No, eat whatever you want, as much you fruit as you want. You eat 100 bananas if you can eat 100 But like bananas. watermelon. I don't care how much watermelon Really. You eat. There is never, not once, not one single study anywhere in the scientific literature ever in the history of science shown a single paper that has ever, ever, ever said that fruit causes fat. It doesn't happen. It will never happen. You can eat as much fruit as you want ever, forever, ever. And anybody who tells you you can't eat fat is a complete idiot. And you could tell him I said that. He doesn't even understand basic calories in, calories out. So this is a red flag right there. So they lack... 
B vitamins, I mean, how could a plant-based diet person lack B vitamins? They end up lacking B vitamins and lacking zinc. Um, they don't take supplements because, you know, they get on this like, oh my God, I'm not gonna do anything unless it's from nature. So they get B12 deficiencies. Yeah, crazy people, right? Wait a second. Instead of taking B12, vitamin D3, DHA and EPA, and a protein supplement, I could eat, hmm, let me think, mussels, oysters, eggs. With eggs, I would even get a bioavailable vitamin A. Nah, that sounds crazy to me. Why would I, right? Because those animal products are so poisonous. I should take those supplements. That sounds good. Where can I buy it, Dr. Garth Davis? Can you give me a B12 shot? Maybe then I would be healthier. You are trying to convince people to pop pills and somehow, magically, in your world view, this is healthier than eating a whole food. This is somehow healthier than eating oysters and mussels. Are you joking? Then they feel like shit and they get sick because they're eating a really bad diet. They're not eating a good diet. Just because they're not eating meat doesn't mean that they're eating a healthy diet. Yeah, again, they're eating a bad diet, right? You know them all. How presumptuous is that, really? That is so crazy. How do you call yourself a doctor? You just assume that all of those people haven't been taking supplements, ate a shitty diet, were raw, vegan, fruitarian, and whatnot. I've been on a whole food plant-based diet for the last year of my journey where I religiously tracked all my macros, all my micros, supplemented everything. As I said, B12, DHA, EPA and whatnot. Everything was accounted for. I was eating enough calories, I was getting enough sleep, enough hydration and whatnot. I was eating legumes, grains and all of that stuff. And I failed. How come? What is your explanation there? You cannot give an explanation there because you're highly biased. All you will do is attack people personally. You will blame and shame those people. Those are traits of a cult, of course. You will shame those people. You did it wrong. You've never been vegan. You've been eating the wrong food all along. Of course, this is a pattern of a cult. Then they take a bite of meat, which is loaded with calories and loaded with fat, and they get some of this fat back and they feel great. And oh my God, veganism killed me. Veganism didn't kill you. Your bad diet killed you. It's, it's just so, I don't know, blatantly obvious to me. Then they take a bite of meat and because of the calories, they feel so good. Dr. Garth Davis, do you really believe this stuff yourself? Do you truly believe what you are saying right there? You believe that those people just got an energy boost because of calories. A bite of meat? That doesn't make sense, does it? Scientifically, wouldn't you get much more energy by eating a banana, right? Instant carbohydrates. You would get more energy. That should fix the problem. Now you say it's the fat. Okay, how about eating an avocado then? It is not the fat. It is not the carbs. It is not the macronutrients. It is about the micronutrients that you are missing on a vegan diet. You're not getting carnitin. You're not getting carnison. You're not getting L-carnitin. You're not getting creatine. So on and so forth. This is why those people feel better. You want to tell them that it's the macronutrients. How very simplistic, don't you think? Those people feel better because they're ingesting pre formed nutrients. There are countless studies on vegans taking a creatine supplement and noticing, wow, big surprise, an energy increase and a return of their mental faculties. How come? So you can clearly see that pre-formed amino acids and vitamins have beneficial properties to them. This is why people feel better. Why don't you just admit that? Now, the science behind whether a plant-based diet is going to kill you is just I mean, it's just preposterous to even suggest that it would. Just preposterous. <laughs> yeah, and it's not preposterous to just blame people and tell them that they did it wrong. That is not preposterous at all. It is preposterous. Again, all of those studies have been conducted on plant-based societies, not on vegans. The vegan studies, even if you look into the Adventist studies, there you will see that the vegans didn't show the great results that the pescatarians showed, for example. Why don't you mention that? It's the healthiest diet you could do. And the thing about it is my diet, I'm not, it's not difficult to, for me to eat my diet. I don't do it, oh my God, I wake up every morning like I wish I could go and eat this, but I gotta eat this instead. It doesn't work like that. 
I have oatmeal and berries and all kinds of stuff for breakfast that tastes great. Sometimes I'll have a tofu scramble and a burrito. Um, you know, my lunches are soups and salads and potatoes. Um, I eat a lot of grains. I eat a lot of dark greens. I eat a lot of legumes. I eat a lot of fruit. I eat all of these foods. So he never misses food. He's never hungry. Yeah, maybe because you're constantly bloated. All of those foods are man-made. The grains, those oats, the blueberries, all those fruits, the vegetables that you're eating nowadays, all of them have been manufactured by humans. If you look into their wild natural equivalent, those foods look nothing like their modern day counterparts. To base your diet on modern day manufactured foods originates from a food confusion already. Because we've been fed those mediocre products, now you make the assumption that if you replace the exact same products with a vegan alternative, you will somehow be magically healthy. He's talking about bean burritos. Nobody tells you to eat burritos in the first place. No matter if they're meat-based or plant-based, burritos are shit. What's in those oats with blueberries? Nothing much, just a bit of fiber, a little bit of zinc, nothing of real value. All you're ingesting there are macronutrients, just energy that you run through. And a ton of fiber, of course, which makes you bloated. Maybe this is why you're not hungry. But you're not getting all of those preformed nutrients, all of those micronutrients that you find in animal foods, such as oysters, mussels, liver, and even eggs. This is dangerous misinformation. So I'm never hungry. I mean, what really surprises me is when people go to a vegan diet and then they still are portion controlling. So they're eating these tiny meals. They're hardly getting any calories and they feel like crap and they don't know why they feel like crap. It should be obvious why you feel like crap. You're not getting enough calories. Yeah, again, the next vegan slogan, <laughs> you didn't eat enough calories. That's what it is. Yeah, of course. But what about the people that have been tracking their calories? All of my friends that are not vegan anymore tracked their calories. All of my clients, I tracked the calories for them. All of them ate plentiful, but they still failed on a vegan diet because it wasn't suitable for their physiology, not because they didn't eat enough. It is like talking to a child. How can you be so sure of yourself? How can you be so sure that all of those people did it wrong. It is insane. How can you call yourself a medical professional, an intellectual, and just throw out assumption after assumption? How can you not see what is truly going on here? Can't you read your own science? Uh, but that doesn't happen in my diet. And I'll tell you, you want to go and hang with the vegan bodybuilders or come to some of the veg fests. Like I would do this veg fest in Marshall, uh, Texas, and everyone there was this pillar, just the sparkling beacon of health. The sparkling beacon of health. The vegan bodybuilders. Now you have my attention. I was a vegan bodybuilder myself. That is the best way to nutritionally deplete yourself. That is the quickest and the most efficient way because you will run through all of your bodily proteins. You will just cannibalize your own body. All of those vegan bodybuilders are either vegan for a year or two, or they already failed on their vegan diet. Or even worse, and for those people I truly feel sorry, they had to end their careers. That happened to Patrick Baboumian, and that happened to Kendrick Ferris as well, the Olympic weightlifter who had to end his career. You see it in so many vegan athletes. That happened to Djokovic as well, the tennis player. He was at his best before the vegan diet. Then he went vegan and acquired injury after injury, and his career declined to that extent that he had to end his career. And nowadays, of course, he's eating meat again. A vegan diet is not sustainable for athletic goals. Or take my good friend Jonathan Irizari, who has been vegan for almost two years and had to end it because of injuries, because of overall weakness, muscle cramping. He said, I'm quoting here, that he thought about leaving bodybuilding completely and that he was thinking about picking up yoga. 
This is how far you decline. You do not have quality proteins to fuel your workouts anymore. This is a total joke. Like unreal health. I mean, these people are running, they feel great. They're eating all day long. They're having tons of great food. <laughs> yeah, of course they're running all day. And of course they're eating all day. This is what you see with vegans. You have to eat all day. You have to grace. You have to become a herbivore again. You have to eat sugar all day long. And then, because your body doesn't know what to do with all of that energy, you become a runner or a cyclist. This is what you see in the vegan community. You do not have building blocks. Proteins are building blocks. All those micronutrients nourish your body. The carbohydrates or the fats are an energy source. This is what you see in the vegan community. Yes, they're eating all day delicious foods. Of course, it's delicious because it's all sugar. You're sugar addicts. You are eating carbs and then the next thing you know, you have to go for a run. You have to go for a hike. You have to burn through that energy. And meanwhile, you are just secreting insulin and you're taxing your pancreas. There is this doctor called Ford Brewer, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to link his channel in the description box. He used to be a plant-based doctor, just like yourself, for over 20 years. Now, he's pre-diabetic. Now, he's eating animal products to save his own life. Uh, everybody's happy and they're healthy. These aren't people that are even in the realm of even thinking that they would switch. Yes, so was I. So was any vegan whilst being vegan. We all thought that this is the best way of eating and we would love to stay vegan forever. But then, further down the line, you realize that you are totally depleted. You have days where you cannot get out of bed anymore. You have days where you cannot go into public because you have to run to the toilet seven times per day, constantly bloated, constantly farting. In the beginning, of course it feels good. In the beginning, you are in a fasting mimicking state and this is where you don't think about ever leaving veganism. So did I. But further down the road, you will question yourself. Let me ask you, Dr. Garth Davis, how long have you been vegan? So my advice to you is totally and completely and utterly ignore YouTube videos, which is ironic because here's a YouTube video. Ignore a millennial who went from one bad diet to another. Totally ignore YouTube videos, right? Ignore anecdotal evidence. Listen to me. Listen to the medical professionals. This is the narrative in the vegan religion. No matter what you display, Garth Davis, Gregor. Gregor looks like a skeleton. You have pictures out there with him next to 13-year-old girls. He's thinner than them. Totally malnourished. An absolute display of bad health. But listen to him. He's the authority. Disqualify your fellow man. Disqualify your friends and family members. Doesn't matter if your grandma offers you some good food to nourish your body because she probably knows that you are starving yourself. Doesn't matter. Listen to the authorities. This is the real conspiracy here. Why do I have to listen to another man instead of trusting my own gut? Why don't I look back in time where all the civilizations, all the healthy civilizations, like you just said, ate animal products? Now all of a sudden I have to listen to you guys and instead of watching youtube videos i will read studies but somehow listening to you guys is the right thing and listening to my fellow man is the wrong thing this is exactly what they're trying to push they try to take your power away they try to push you into this little me i don't know anything i'm gonna listen to the authorities scenario this is extremely dangerous and it's just like going on the winds of change and whatever is new is whatever they're going to popularize on their videos. I mean, they'll go from vegan to selling bone broth in a matter of months. It's absolutely ridiculous. Stick with the scientists that are bringing you good science to talk about what health is. Look at the experts. I mean, the experts at the U.S. World News uh, report on diet. The experts, look at the experts, read through the studies. Doesn't matter how you feel. 
All of those people that failed are just millennials and now they're selling bone broth. Don't listen to them. Listen to me. Listen to me. Buy my books, Proteinaholic, where I tell you that you can eat all the carbohydrates, all the tasty sugar, as much as you want to. Eat as many carbs as you want and you won't get fat. Uh, report on diet. I mean, they said that the top diets, the top diet for health, Ornish is up there. The top general diet is um, the DASH diet, which was actually based on a vegetarian diet, but they made it have some animal products in order to get most people to use it. And the flexitarian diet, which is basically plant-based diet. And then the Mediterranean diet, when done traditionally, is a predominantly plant-based diet. This is mind-blowing to me. In the beginning of the video, I really thought that the guy's disingenuous. But now what I see is a guy that indoctrinated himself almost. He truly bought into his religion. He again states the Ornish diet, which includes dairy. He moves on and talks yet again about a diet that includes animal products. Then he moves on to the flexitarian diet, which includes animal products. And he ends it with the Mediterranean diet, which is highly animal-based. Dr. Garth Davis, don't you see a pattern here? This insanity, really, I can't believe that a grown man will sit here on YouTube and will tell you to eat a vegan diet. Meanwhile, he is recommending a plant-based diet. Meanwhile, the science, even if you choose to believe it, is recommending a plant base diet. Do I really need to say anything more? This is insanity. It is again like talking to a child. The preformed vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, you cannot find those in their equivalent forms as you could in certain animal products. This is why those healthy diets included the animal products. And now you can ask yourself the question, is it the animal products that are healthy or is it the sweet potatoes? The Mediterranean diet when done traditionally is a predominantly plant-based diet. These diets have tons and tons of evidence. If you want to be vegan, you could be vegan easily. Now we can talk about what deficiencies you could run into. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, all of those diets are predominantly plant-based. And he goes on. If you want to be vegan, you can be easily vegan. How do you come to this conclusion? The, the only key supplement you have to take is B12. That, gotta take it. Gotta take it, okay? If you are getting plenty of legumes and grains, you don't have to worry about zinc. My zinc level through the roof, I, uh, fantastic. It's easy to get um, zinc, but if you think you're deficient in that, you can be. Now, women can get deficient in iron, but you know, the crazy thing to me is like these, these YouTubers go to a doctor. If you go to a doctor who's not trained in nutrition, you tell them you're vegan and you got a problem, they're going to blame it on veganism. They're just going to say, oh, it's your vegan diet, which is absurd. It's just absurd because they'll have a patient right before them who's eating meat and they come in and they're hypothyroid and they're like, oh, you're hypothyroid because of this, that, and the other. Vegan comes in and they're hypothyroid. It's like, oh, it's because you're vegan. Whereas the data shows that vegans do not have an increased risk of hypothyroidism. Okay, so now he admits you need to take B12, maybe you need to take zinc, but he corrects himself that all of those doctors that are recommending anything else than veganism are of course not trained professionals in nutrition. But you're not either. He's a surgeon. He has no idea when it comes down to diets. You're not a nutritionist. You're not a certified dietitian either. You are a surgeon. Um, I, I'm a surgeon, which is not something that you typically see in a preventative medicine type world. Surgeons, we believe a chance to cut is a chance to cure. You wrote another book, The Expert's Guide to Weight Loss Surgery, right? So how are you qualified to talk about nutrition? But anyway, you will see iron deficiencies in people. We see it in meat eaters, we see it in vegans. The answer to that is not to eat meat. In fact, that heme iron is very toxic, very bad. Again, another vegan thing to say here. Those deficiencies are common in everybody. It's not just the vegans, the omnivores are deficient as well. And he continues to say that heme iron is so toxic. What do you base that on? Heme iron is much better absorbable than plant iron. Plant iron is on top of that found in green leafy vegetables that contain anti-nutrients such as oxalates. 
So how is that package healthier for you? You get iron that is poorly absorbed and on top of that you're getting anti-nutrients. Meanwhile you could eat organs and you would get a great source of iron, bloody meat. That is a perfect source for iron. Tribes all over the world have been drinking blood. This is how those ancient people made sure that they will get all of their nutrition. But you will say that somehow it's toxic. How are we even here nowadays? I'm wondering. The first generation to try the vegan diet, pretty much everybody fails. We have the highest dropout rate. I believe it's 90% by now. 90% of vegans will be ex-vegans. But now you will tell me that heme iron is toxic. Strange. How did we reproduce? How did we make it to 2019? Makes you wonder. Uh, you could supplement with iron or you could eat a lot of dark green vegetables. Um, or take a supplement. Or you could supplement. Well, great, sure. Because you already realized that, that those leafy greens, as I said, have a ton of anti-nutrients. So in the end, you will have to supplement. And there you go, another pill in your daily schedule. Great diet. Um, you can get an omega-3 deficiency. And I think this might be more common than we know. It's still being studied <laughs> now it's common to get a omega-3 deficiency right yeah because now you're not following a plant-based diet now you're not eating like the sardinians you're not eating like the blue zones because you excluded the fish now you're not getting the preformed vitamins minerals and you're not getting the dha and epa which is needed for your brain because 40 percent of your brain is dha but now hey all of that is wrong and I'm gonna disqualify my own studies and instead I'm gonna supplement with pills. There's so much better. <laughs> I take an omega-3 supplement. I take a microalgae. Um, I, I don't wanna eat fish. There's a lot of toxins and dioxins and PVCs. They're not as loaded in uh, omega-3s as they used to be and fishing is destroying the oceans. And so I will, um, take an omega-3 supplement it's pretty easy it's an algae supplement of course you take a supplement of course you do not want to eat fish because you brainwashed yourself just like anybody else out there it doesn't matter that you have a medical title it doesn't matter that you're a doctor after all you're just a man like anybody else back in the day you dr garth davis admitted that as well that you've been promoting meat diets and now you just jumped ship and now you're gonna promote the vegan diet man this is insanity you won't eat fish why why don't you eat sardines those foods are not polluted at all they come with all the pre-formed vitamins and minerals but you cannot accept that. You cannot listen to your own scientific studies anymore. Even though those scientific studies tell you to eat fish, you will say that fish is heavily polluted. Vegan brainwashing. Um, there are these debates over certain amino acids like taurine, which your body can make itself. It's not an essential amino acid. Um, I don't think you have to worry much about that. Creatine, all the bodybuilders and, and a lot of the athletes take creatine. Um, it, there has been some studies showing that it does help vegetarians and it can help you with your exercise performance. It actually may help with cognition. I've trialed it. Um, now you're just proving my point. You're doing the work for me. Now you say that you have benefits of consumption of creatine, the consumption of pre formed vitamins, amino acids, and minerals. And all the bodybuilders take it, right? There you see that on a whole food, vegan diet, you cannot achieve your goals. You need to eat supplements. Why eat a salmon steak? Eat omega-3s instead. Why eat red meats? Eat creatine powders instead. Don't you see the hypocrisy here? Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. I, I really haven't noticed much of a difference, but it's something that you could add to supplements. That's basically it. If you're vitamin D deficient, take vitamin D. If you're not, don't. The best way to get vitamin D is the sun. Man, the list never ends. What did you just list there? Vitamin D, iron, creatine, other preformed amino acids, omega-3s, B12. You are dependent on the pharma industry. 
Do you see a pattern here? Listen to the medical professional and he will recommend medicine to you. Medicine, chemicals, supplements, that is much better than eating natural foods. Are you joking? This is ridiculous. I feel like we are living in idiocracy. The movie. How can you truly believe that this is healthier for you? Wake up people, please. You cannot tell me that eating five different pills per day is healthier than eating a fucking salmon steak. But the bottom line is it is so easy to create an unbelievably healthy plant-based diet that would make you feel fantastic, that would make your numbers rival anybody, that would make you live as long as your as anybody in the world. It is incredibly easy. Yeah? <laughs> How is that incredibly easy? Do you know what kind of mental burden is laid upon people that need to consume five different medicines every single day in order to sustain themselves? How is that easy? How is that a great diet that will let you live as long as anybody out there? What are you talking about? We do not have vegan population studies. We do not have healthy, long-living vegan population studies. Nowhere. All of those studies, I'm repeating myself for the hundredth time, have been conducted on plant-based eaters, allegedly. All of those societies have been eating animal products. How will you tell me now, with this new, man-made, manufactured diet, I will be miraculously healthy, even though we do not have studies on long-term B12, D3, DHA, EPA consumption. We do not have scientific studies that show what is going to happen to you if you supplement all your life. Uh, it's also possible to eat a completely junk food and unhealthy vegan diet. And so you got to choose appropriately, but choose it based on science, not based on some millennial kid who got a zit while doing a juice fast. Booyah, and he's out. Don't choose it on the millennial with a zit who did a juice fast. That is insane, man. Honestly, this is the most ridiculous video. And if I look through the comments, I see all the vegans applauding him. Great job, the most rational response. Base your diet on science. Again, if you yourself would base your diet on science, you wouldn't be vegan. You wouldn't be vegan. You would consume a plant-based diet. All right, guys, but the video has been long enough. I'm going to cut it off here. I know the response has been a little late, but I just had to respond to this. This is the idiocracy that we find ourselves in. We are living in a society where this dangerous belief system creeps into our politics. Very soon, the narrative, meat is murder, will become a reality, and then you cannot eat healthful anymore. Even those plant-based eaters that are pushing veganism will not be able to sustain themselves. They won't be able to be healthy themselves because they excluded all of the healthy animal products. Alright guys, so this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And as always guys, much love and peace.